Good evening. Welcome to another session of the Pauline Pastorate Online Bible Study on the Book of First Timothy. The focus of our study this evening would be First Timothy chapter one verses twelve to fourteen. Now this pericope is part of a larger context, which is seen in First Timothy chapter one verses twelve to seventeen, that talks about the Apostle Paul's testimony of the grace and the mercy of God. The whole pericope appears to be an aside of the Apostle Paul praising God for His grace and mercy that was shown to him. And what we're going to look at in the weeks to come would be Paul and the grace and mercy of God in verses 12 to 14. Paul and the purpose of Christ Jesus by the grace and the mercy of God. Of, of God. Paul and the pattern of the grace and the mercy of God in verse 16. And Paul and the praise of Christ Jesus by the grace and the, glo- and the mercy of God in verse 17. Now, for our study of the Word of God this evening, let me start by reading you the whole pericope of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 7. The Word of God says this, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 17. The Word of God says this, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to ever to life everlasting. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, before we continue our study of the Word of God this evening, let us first come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your Word. And we thank you that we can look into your Word and see the exaltation of the mercy and grace though of the Lord Jesus as demonstrated through the life of our Apostle Paul. And tonight, Father, I pray, that as we look into your word, may you guide us into all the truth. Help us to see the things you want us to say. And may the truths that we receive from your word this evening simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, there is something unique about the Pauline pastorate that bears importance in understanding pastors and the ministry of the pastors in this dispensation of grace. I want us to see a pattern in Paul's opening greetings. Now, we start with the book of Romans. And if you would turn to Romans chapter 1, verse number 7, the Apostle Paul gives this opening greeting. The Apostle Paul writes in verse number 7, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. Now let me show you 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3, where the Apostle Paul writes this word saying, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you notice a pattern? Let me read another. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse number 2, and we would read these words. The Apostle Paul writes, saying, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. Another, Galatians chapter 1, verse number 3. The Apostle Paul writes, Grace be to you and 
and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace is a pattern that we can see, right? Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 2 says this, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Same pattern, right? Another one, Philippians chapter 1, verse number 2. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 2. The Apostle Paul writes on saying, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Another, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 2. To the saints and the faith and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. How about 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 1? The Apostle Paul says, he says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 1, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. One last, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 2, the Apostle Paul writes with the same greeting. He says, Grace be grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. The pattern seems to be obvious, right? That in those epistles of the Apostle Paul to the churches, he greeted them with grace and peace. Now, how about Paul's personal letter to Philemon? Let's turn to Philemon chapter 1, verse number 3. The Apostle Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. To the letters to the churches and to Philemon, Paul greets them, grace and peace. Same pattern, right? But if you would turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 2, we would see a shift in the pattern. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2, the Apostle Paul writes, Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's see 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 2. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 2, the Apostle Paul writes, saying, To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace. To the letters to the churches and to the personal letter to Philemon, grace and peace. But to Timothy and a pastoral epistle, it's grace, mercy, and peace. Now this is also seen in Titus chapter 1 verse number 4 where Timothy addressed Titus, saying, To Titus, mine own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We realize that in the, in the epistles addressed to the churches and to the personal epistle, the Apostle Paul tells his audience, grace and peace. But in 1 Timothy and Titus, the pastoral epistles, Paul's greeting is grace, mercy, and peace. This shows us an important truth about pastors in this dispensation of grace that I believe is essential for us to understand. And it is this, that we are saved by grace by virtue of the finished work of Jesus Christ in His death burial, and resurrection. And the church is saved that way. Both church and the pastors are saved by grace through the finished work of Jesus Christ. We have the peace of God, having been saved by wrath, 
through the faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Both the pastor and the church is given the peace of God. Grace and peace for both pastor and people. But we see also that as pastors, we have received mercy when the Lord God hath enabled us and counted us faithful, putting us into the ministry just like our Apostle Paul. For this reason, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 1, he says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Now, we would say that this is what the Apostle Paul desires to do in this pericope that we're going to study for the weeks to come. It is to exalt the grace and mercy of God in his own life. The verses that we'll be looking at starts from last week as we take a peek at the Apostle Paul's heart of gratitude for the grace and mercy of God that was bestowed upon him. For us to understand their passage, let's start reading from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 11, where the Apostle Paul says, According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Now, this connects to the previous passages that we have seen where the wannabe teachers of the law wish to bring believers back to the law. However, they missed the end of the commandment, which is charity, that they have turned aside unto vain jangling. Vain jangling because they're uttering meaningless and worthless noise because the law cannot justify in this dispensation of grace. It's an impossibility. Thus, they miss the point of the law that in this dispensation, it is meant to expose sin and to stir a need for the gospel of the grace of God. The gospel of the grace of God, according to the Apostle Paul, was committed to his trust. This is what the, the Apostle Paul testified in Galatians chapter 1, verse number 11 to 12. And if we would turn to that, we would see what how special this gospel is. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, the Apostle Paul says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. By this we see that the gospel that Paul preached is unique and distinct from the other gospels that were preached in the scriptures to a different audience and in a different dispensation. Paul's gospel is unique and distinct from the gospel that was preached by the 12 apostles. Now, this shows us a unique and distinct gospel necessitates a unique and distinct dispensation, which was committed to the apostle Paul. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17, the apostle Paul says, For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will... A dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. And this gospel of the grace of God was committed to the Apostle Paul in this dispensation of grace. And for that reason, the Apostle Paul is the only one in Scripture that can claim my gospel. As a matter of fact, the phrase my gospel occurs three times in the Scriptures. In Romans chapter 16 verse 25, the Apostle Paul says that it is according to my gospel that God establishes the church. In, first, in Romans chapter 2, verse 16, the gospel of the Apostle Paul is by which God will judge the secrets of man by Jesus Christ. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, it is the gospel that the Apostle Paul says, remember, remember this gospel. Now, this gospel is clearly stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4 to 4, that says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, that, that's plain and simple, which I preach unto you, 
which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. See, it's the gospel of our salvation. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That, my friends, is the gospel that Paul declares and testifies that was committed to his trust. The Apostle Paul includes his apostleship and dispensation of the grace of God to the ministry that Paul is talking about as we read on in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12. So, we continue reading in our passage, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12. The Apostle Paul says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Now we see the Apostle Paul's thanksgiving for the Lord Jesus Christ's appointment of him to the ministry. Now who is the Jesus Christ for the Apostle Paul? Our passage shows us that the Apostle Paul declares that Jesus is Christ Jesus our Lord. Now interestingly, that phrase Christ Jesus our Lord occurs only in the Pauline epistles. Now, we would see that in Romans chapter 8, verse 39, the Apostle Paul talks of the inseparability of the believer for, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, the Apostle Paul shows his steadfastness despite the trouble and the jeopardy that he faces every day causing the Corinthians to rejoice in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11, we would see the purpose of God, which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord for the salvation of mankind by the grace of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 2, the Apostle Paul talks about the grace, mercy, and peace that is from the Father, and Christ Jesus our Lord. Now in our passage, we see that it is Christ Jesus the Lord who did the following things to the Apostle Paul. We read the passage and see that it is Christ Jesus our Lord who number one, enabled the Apostle Paul. He's the one that counted Paul faithful and he's the one who put Paul into the ministry. Now thinking of that, was Paul not qualified to be a minister of the gospel to begin with? Now, we read Paul's resume in Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. Paul shares his resume. Let's see. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. The apostle Paul says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, an Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. You see, the Apostle Paul has an impressive resume. But did you know that the Apostle Paul says that's not what qualified me for ministry? But actually, that is what caused him to be unworthy to be a minister of the gospel. Because of it, in his seal of God, he persecuted the church of God. That's why we would read in Acts chapter 22, verse 3 to 8, Apostle Paul's testimony to the Jews that were at Jerusalem. Acts chapter 22, verses 3 to 8. The Apostle Paul talks about how he met the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. Acts chapter 22, verses 3 to 8. The Apostle Paul relays 
this story. Luke records, saying, Apostle Paul says, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way under unto death, unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus, to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Now, I want us to see the same connection, that it is the same Lord, the same Christ Jesus, our Lord, whom the Apostle Paul persecuted, and it is the same Lord that counted him faithful, that enabled him and put him into the ministry. Can you imagine? The Apostle Paul with all his resume is not worthy to, the, to be a minister of the gospel of God because he persecuted the church of God. He persecuted Christ Jesus our Lord. But it is the same Lord that revealed himself to him and gave him the ministry of the gospel of the grace of God. For that reason, the Apostle Paul declares in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 13, Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious? But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So we see the Apostle Paul's thanksgiving for the Lord Jesus Christ's mercy unto him. Yes, Paul on one hand, was a blasphemer, he was a persecutor, and he was injurious. Nevertheless, Paul declared, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Paul, for his blasphemy of Christ Jesus our Lord, for at the time, he neither knew him nor believed him. And, at that time, for his persecution of the church and his church, of the persecution of Christ and his church, seeking to waste them, seeking to destroy them, thus making him injurious, Paul was not worthy to be put into the ministry. Yet the same Christ Jesus, our Lord, whom the Apostle Paul blasphemed, persecuted and endured by his followers is the same Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled the Apostle Paul, counted him in faithful, and put him into the ministry. Now, if that were not mercy, I don't know what is. Now, one of the greatest root problems in the pastorate today, as well as in the church, is that we have been so trained to think like the world that the pastorate today is all about credentials. What Bible school did he graduate? How was he as a student? What are his degrees? What are the churches that he pastored? What are his achievements? Who were his mentors? Questions like that pop up whenever a church considers a pastor. And many ministers today brag about their credentials, declare their credentials, 
and many would fail to understand that God that understand that God is not privileged for us to serve him but that we are privileged to serve him it's not the other way around it is mercy for us pastors that's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. We faint not. The ministry of the pastor is not by our credentials or achievements. It is never meant to be run by our own skill or our own strength. It is meant to be carried out by the strength that God supplies. And it begins with our acknowledgement that we are in the ministry because of the mercy of God. Now, when we acknowledge that, we read the Apostle Paul continue to declare in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 14, where the Apostle Paul says, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, we see the Apostle Paul's thanksgiving for the Lord Jesus Christ's grace that is shown unto him. And we recognize that the ministry, and when we recognize that the ministry is by the mercy of God, we realize also that grace is exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Jesus Christ. As ministry is not to be meant to be carried out by our own strength, we also understand evermore the ever-sufficient grace of God that He will always supply. Now, we would understand this more when we read what the Apostle Paul had written in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, where the Apostle Paul writes these words. 2 Corinthians Chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, the Apostle Paul says, And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ my rest may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. For this reason, the Apostle Paul is always aware of the grace of God that was bestowed upon him and is working in him. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, the Apostle Paul says, By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Remember, my fellow pastors, ministry ought to be a display of the mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in the pastor himself. Grace and mercy must be immersive first in the life of the pastor and manifested in the ministry that God had entrusted us. Now our text simply says, Paul thanks the Lord Jesus Christ for his mercy and grace, putting him into the ministry despite his past. Our prayer for you tonight is that you will see the grace and mercy of God abounds in this dispensation of grace, both to the people and to the pastors. And as grace and mercy abounds in this dispensation of grace, as a pastor, it is a privilege that we have obtained mercy and have the exceeding abundant 
grace of God for the ministry that God entrusts us. Our prayer for my fellow ministers is that in our ministering, my prayer is that in our ministering in the ministry would be, number one, a clear presentation of the gospel of the grace of God. Warned by the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians, uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 to 17, the Apostle Paul gives these warnings. He says, Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 to 17, the Apostle Paul says, Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. There are so many reasons to preach Christ, but may we resolve to indeed preach Christ. And as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, this is how we ought to preach Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Verses 1 to 5, the Apostle Paul says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. My prayer is that may the gospel of the grace of God that declares how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures be preached not only with our lips but shown through the grace and mercy that is manifested in our lives. Number two, I pray that us in our ministering, in our ministering, the mag we magnify the grace and the mercy of God. May we labor not by our own strength, but by the grace that is with us. May we serve knowing the truth that ministry is a mercy and therefore a privilege that we ought to be thanking God for. Now, my fellow pastors, there are so many challenges in the ministry so many pastors are quitting every day. So many pastors are being swamped by so many challenges and so many things. But my prayer is that at this time, whatever challenge you're going through, that you would see that ministry is a mercy. And since it's a mercy that's given to us, God also will supply His ever-sufficient grace. It would have been good if we minister without inhibitions. But the truth is, whenever we grow and as we move on in ministry, it's either that as pastors we lose our passion or our past, as pastors we face so many hardships that we teeter at the brink of losing our passion. But remember, my friends, the pastorate is not something that we do out of our own strength. It's not our own mind that gets exalted. It's not the skills that we have. No, it should be a reflection of the mercy and the grace of God. So my fellow pastors, let us exalt the Lord Jesus Christ who hath enabled us, counted us faithful, and placed us into the ministry by His mercy and by His grace. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your enablement. We thank you for counting us faithful, putting us into the ministry. Father, I pray that we would remember the truth that the ministry is never meant to be run by our own strength, 
nor to boast of our credentials, but rather to remember that it is a mercy, it's a privilege that we receive, and by your grace that worketh in us, we labor. And we pray, Father God, that we would always remember and exalt the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ that was abundant and bestowed upon us. We thank you for these truths, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you very much for listening. We hope to catch you again in our future broadcast. On Saturday, we have the Comfort Verses in Context. On Monday, we hope to resume a bro our broadcast of the precepts from the Proverbs. And next Thursday, catch you again for another session of the Pauline Pastorate, the online Bible study on the book of 1 Timothy. So thank you very much for listening. The Lord bless you.